Isn't it funny how you have it set to mute, but every time an ad comes on, it doesn't mute it. You actually have to have a whole second right. mute control yeah. for the freaking advertisements. One of these days, I'm going to go ahead and get the um, upgraded version of Twitch and be done with it. Do you have Amazon Prime? Um, I don't oh. know if we do anymore or not. I think we yeah, do. Do you have Amazon I'm Prime? It's, sure. it's Atlas. So I don't get any ads anymore because I connected the Amazon account to it. Oh. Yep. One second. Okay. I had to go shut the door. Dogs. Little voice apparently carries all the way through the house. So... It's Wednesday night. That means it is time for TGCT After Dark. As always, on Wednesday nights, I got Dan Dan the Catcher Man and Matt, a.k.a. Stay Puff 39 with me. So, what do you say, fellas? Hey, hey. How's it going, everybody? So, before we kick off and get straight up into the course, I was telling Matt before uh, Dan got in party and everything else that I'm just going to have every week where I start off with, like, some some lightning round questions i guess is the best way to say it not to rip off irving r levine but um so something i was thinking about earlier today is that i've got one course that's kind of like my standby practice course and um, by reeb dug isla Reseca. um it's a course i like to warm up on because you get a lot of different shots um, elevations and such and there's pretty good probability of high winds so it kind of gets me in the mo um the mode so to speak and then a couple of courses that I've played uh, where the first time you open them up, you start playing them, you're like, wow, oh my God, this is just freaking awesome. Um, one of which was Spartina 2. Um, for whatever reason, I know it's a very simple course, but I just love it. The layout, um, and it's gorgeous in its simplicity. And not to sound like a brown noser, but um, actually Selkie Park. It was won during the um, the web.com finals contest. When I opened it up and started playing it, I was like, damn, there's your winner right there. Um, so I was going to pose this question to both you guys as well. What's one course that is kind of like your standby warm-up course? And what's a course that the first time you just set foot on the tee box, you, uh, you're you just like, oh, wow, holy crap. And since Dan usually goes first tonight, we're going to start with Matt. Uh, well, first of all, you do sound like a brown noser. I'm uh, not. I'm, saying, I, I told you that. <laughs> I told you that even in no, the PMs, man. As soon as I played it, I messaged you and was like, you won, dude. <laughs> so, uh, no, well, thank you. And uh, I do actually, I play Kakalaki from uh, time to time when I'm trying to hone in my, uh, my driver distances. And uh, when I'm trying to uh, practice, uh, trying to hit narrow fairways, actually, I love to practice on Royal Ballyloo. Uh, you can normally get some decent wins there, too. So it's a good one to kind of dial in off the tee. You can kind of uh, start to get a feel for how winds will affect your tee shot. So I always like to play a few holes there uh, before I get into a nice long playing session. And uh, as for uh, a course where you step on the tee and... Uh, uh, just kind of uh, say, wow. Uh, I think the last one that did that for me was the White Fang. Uh, there was a couple holes early on in that course where you just kind of, your eyes just pop. It seems like everything's kind of just in the right place to to make the course pop. And uh, it makes you, makes you realize how crappy you are in the designer when you see <laughs> someone that can like make it look that good off the tee. You know, oddly enough, I haven't seen set my path around for a little bit, so I don't know if he's just on break till TGC2 comes out or whatever, but he's kind of gone completely silent. So, well, what about you, Dan Dan, the catcher man? Like Matt said, it's probably dependent on what you're trying to work on, but um, in terms of practicing, I actually like to practice on a lot of Adam Benjamin's courses. It's like Phantom Pass or um, Ecliptic Bay or um, uh, Athena Academy. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, I think Academy is a great course to work on, like the pitch shots, because it's you know only 6,500 yards or whatever it is. So it's got you get a lot of short shots in. Whereas Ecliptic Bay, you know, the emphasis is on hitting fairways, um, and you got long shots into greens and stuff like that. Um, in terms of courses that hit my eye, um, I like Smuggler's Lock. 
Um, Royal Brumby yeah. another one. Patrick Yates courses, you know, uh, tie dunes. Oh yeah. Uh, courses that have a, a Lynx feel to them, but they're they're uh, um, you know like realistic Lynx courses. So. Yep, right on. Actually, you mentioned Athena Academy. That's one that might not be a bad um, a bad course to do for the show because it's one of um, Arctic Fury's courses that didn't get as much recognition as some of the others. Um, I mean, it got some comments and everything when it first came out, but it was kind of like right in between two of his bigger ones that got a lot of yeah. press. So yeah. it kind of went unnoticed a little bit. But It's also well, not on tour, is it? No, that. no, I don't know that. I don't know where it would be a good fit. I can't put it on CCM, not for me anyway. Um, CCM, it's got too many elevation changes. Um, I guess if I wanted to give them a challenge and make them learn elevation changes, it'd be a good one. Yeah. But um, and for CC Pro, it's kind of a tweener, man. I'm afraid CC Pro would just eat it alive. I mean, I think the first time I played it, I shot 11 under in like 10 mile an hour winds or so. So yeah. Um, and I am definitely not at the top of the um, the food chain when it comes to CC players. So I would say I'm a middle of the pack air. You know, some weeks I'm better than others. So, well, any other things you guys have going or want to chat about before we get into this? Oh, not on my end. Yeah, I, uh, I, my brain is fried. I finally had a chance to just kind of like you, Griff, today. I had a chance to sit in the designer for about three hours or four hours, and now my brain's fried. I haven't done that in a long time. <laughs> well, it's funny because I've actually kind of had this mental block in the designer for about two weeks now, to be honest. And, um, I don't know if I would call as much of a mental block as much as it is. I've got two different courses I'm really excited about that I'm working on as far as my own creations. Um, one of which is a borrow course. One is a um, rustic course. And I really got jacked up about the rustic course. I got a lot of what I consider to be great ideas, stuff I have not seen done before, and looks that, not to sound in any way egotistical or douche canoey about it, um, if I can do it, I'm going to get people going like, okay, how the hell do you pull that off? Uh -huh. And it's trying to implement those within the framework of a course. And I get going on it. And of the five holes, I was like, yep, these are showcase holes. Four of them pulled off. One of them just didn't work. And I don't think I can make it work. And it's pissing me off. Um, it, it'll change in TGC2 when they allow you to have adjustable water levels. I'm assuming that like your, um, your, um, um, retaining walls will be able to adjust to that as well and that'll make a huge difference in my design um, because what I was trying to do and I'm actually doing it on both the two current courses I'm personally working on where I'm trying to use um, retaining wall without it being in water like trying to use it on flat level ground and still trying to make it look correct and um I've got it looking semi-decent on one of them because I don't need it to be as accurate as I did on my rustic course. I was trying to do something very specific um, on my rustic course, and it didn't pan out. So I'm going to tack a little bit, change course. But I'm um, actually looking forward to getting both these done. They're going to be different for me because they're actually going to be medium firmness instead of fast and firm, which is unusual for me. But Or I should say firm because I never go like max speed on any of my courses. I'm usually... Um, um, I go firm, and then I go 160, 166-ish. That's usually my range for my base course. But yeah, um, I can control the speed and contouring a little bit more. A lot of people believe that that doesn't make a difference, but it does. Uh -huh. So, yeah. And then, of course, I've got um, two collaborations going, one with Erickson Stone that um, I need to jump back on that one. I'm actually kind of waiting for him to finish some holes up, and then we'll be on to um, final planting and contouring phase. But so far, it's playing pretty well. It's kind of a neat little course. And then um, my course with Imrula that uh, really kind of geeked out about to see how that one turns out because uh, that one I got fired up and inspired about today. So we're about to make the push on it, and it'll um, it'll kind of be down to planting and um, and some of the looks as well. And as soon as we can get our... Um, heads in the same page about what we want the final product to look like. It's just going to pull together. I think you guys are going to like it. So, 
um, yeah, I'll say it beforehand. I'll say it again. Um, happy holidays to everybody. We're getting that time of year. So Thanksgiving tomorrow. Hope everybody enjoys their dinner and has a good time. Um, other than that, um, once again, we are going to be playing a course tonight called Scott and Park Golf Club by um, Anti Peros Jez. Um, he's not really active on the TGCT forums. He's more active on the HB forums. He puts out some really good courses. Um, he released this one and um, one other about the same time, the King's Road or the King's something. Um, crap. One second, let me get my list and pull it back up. The King's Down, I think is what it was called. Anyway, he released these about the same time, and I think he said this is the last one he's going to be um, releasing um, before TGC2. And um, thought it might be fun to play it. I actually haven't looked at it yet. So, yeah, New Kings, that's it. Bammer got, or Hammer got it. Um, I, I've actually got it pinned. It's going on tour. So why I can't remember the name of it, I don't know. Blame it on me being old. Blame it on a couple <laughs> of glasses of wine. Um, blame it on 12-year-olds kicking my ass in Titanfall 2. I don't know. But, um, anyway, we're going to be looking at Scott and Park Golf Club and giving it a look. Um, just to let everybody know, as well as um, Jez, that when we go through these, if I make comments about a design, um, more times than not, it's not a right or wrong issue. Um, if there are things that are designer 101 that I point out, it is what it is. But if I make things or comments like, hey, this is something I might do, or I probably would have done this a little bit different, I'd like to see this, um, that's just coming from my eye as a designer, my personal aesthetic, and sometimes a designer, but, or excuse me, a um, scheduler. But if it's for a scheduler point of view, I'll point that out. So, other than that, unless there's anything else, I guess let's go ahead and get this one going. <coughs> Looks like we got the TGC course review guys in here. I don't know if that's Kent, I don't know if that's Greg, but it's one or the other. I'm assuming it's Greg. I thought it was Greg. It might not be. Speaking of which, um, for everybody watching, for everybody that's going to catch the stream later on tonight or tomorrow when you watch it on replay, if you guys have not checked out their show, they're on Thursday nights at 6 p.m. Central Time. Um, so that'd be 7 o'clock Eastern. Um, they are usually pretty good about throwing up in the shout box, but give them guys a look and um, give them some support as well. Yeah, I love seeing new course review shows, and anybody that wants to twitch their rounds, I'm a big fan of. And uh, I, I love that they're, they're already they're already starting discussions as well in the forum. Uh, yeah. Starting, uh, but that's the thing is they get people interested, and wow, I think that they are doing absolutely nothing wrong. And some people are just really good at this game. Yeah. Uh, but I do want to put out there that I will not be lofting uh, more than <laughs> half a today because. As uh, you guys know, my shanks are terrible enough when I lock zero. Well, uh, that's me, man. I don't, um, I don't do a lot of the loft and stuff that everybody else does. No, we, I played around with it uh, the other day, yesterday, <clears throat> in a late night stream, and it really doesn't make a difference. Like, it doesn't make near enough difference. Yeah. Well, and you have to, you, you just cannot be off at all. It's, it just doesn't seem worth it to me. But if you can hit it straight and there's a, you know, a big downhill or something, certainly I've seen people have drive me by 10, 12 yards. Uh, it's not worth it for me. I'm like you, Matt. I don't, no. um, I don't hit consistently straight enough to do it. I mean, I'll have days where I'm like dead on and it seems like I'm hitting everything straight, but even then, once per round, my thumb will move or something like that and I hit one yeah. <laughs> off in yeah, the middle I of see. nowhere. So, I have got turn order enabled. I got both of you on my screen, so here we go. Beautiful. Looks like we got some firm fairways on this course here. So, hit the green. We got, we got quite a lot of roll out there, you and I did, Matt. Yeah, looks like uh, small greens, too, so you definitely don't want to be short of these things. The question is going to be, are the greens firm? Right. If so, this well, could be ugly. I hope I'm you not. you got to be the farthest one away so you can hit first here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you. That's me.
I don't know why you guys hit it that much further than me. I hit a seven mile an hour crosswind. But... <laughs> oh, I think well. we just caught the right part of that fairway because we're a little right to where you are. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just trying to be in the middle of it. I'm a lowly CC guy, so yeah. if I if I hit the middle of the fairway, I'm good. If I hit the middle, I am good. I liked your uh, course choice this week for CC Pro. That was a nice, interesting course. Uh, a bit of what Can't course what is that? Sandy Foot. Sandy Foot. Yeah, yeah Sandy Foot. Yeah, that's uh, Yates. That's Yates again, right? Yeah, that was his Olympic course. We dialed it down just a little bit off of the original to kind of make it CC viable, but guys are going to shoot low on it, though. Okay. Yeah, if this is a firm green, this is going to be ugly. Yeah, we're Hopefully about to find out. I should be <laughs> locked into it if they're medium. Nope. Oh, damn. I, I don't know. I hit the lip and it bounced straight up. You hit the fairway. Up. Hit the fairway. Um, yeah. uh, hey, well. Not bad. I actually well, need to um, enter my scores on that. I wasn't going to. I usually, a lot, most of the time, I play in regards to how I do. I just don't enter my scores because I'm not necessarily into it. But I'm like 47 under for four rounds on oh, that. So. Nice. That's pretty good there. But you don't even want to move up. I don't. I really don't. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to. I've said it before. I enjoy scheduling. I enjoy scouting courses. I enjoy all that. But when it comes time, when I sit down to play four rounds on the same course, people don't understand. I've already played that course more than likely eight or nine times before it ever makes it on tour. So it's just kind of like, eh, okay. And you'd think I would be better. You, you would think I would be better at this freaking game playing the courses. I'm selecting them, and I still get my ass kicked. What's up with that? Uh, well, <laughs> it's always easier said than done. Uh, All right, let's see what I can do here. Let's see if I hit the fringe, too. Yeah, I'm going to be short. I'm in the bunker. <laughs> so we're still not going to know. Well, it's hard to tell. We still don't know if these are firm greens or not because... Yep. We suck. <laughs> One's in the bunker. One, I hit the freaking fairway or lip or whatever that I hit, and it bounced straight up. So I don't. I really didn't watch close enough to see if I actually hit part of the fairway and it bounced up that high, or excuse me, the green and it bounced up that high, or if it was just the fairway. But Matt's gonna get it for us. He's gonna show us the way. I thought it hit the green. I just wanted to have a freaking putt, but no, that looks medium to me. Yeah. Medium with fast green, it looks like. Yeah, medium with fast. Medium with fast. So we're good. So firm and medium, I don't like that combination. Depending on where the pins are. Yeah, it depends on if you have to use any of the um, fairway or not to get close to the pin. If um, I play it straight up, it's not that bad. But... Wow. That was a good chip there. Nice. There you go. Okay. Real straight little shot there. So. All right, so, I got the old plug a lie here. Just want to take a chance to um, thank all you guys for uh, checking in with us and watching the show. By all means, you're welcome for your own comments and everything else. Um, the more you guys um, interact with us, the more fun it is for everybody. Yeah, I don't blame you, Griff, for not wanting to move on in the web from CC. I started in CC, and there's, uh, it's definitely just a little bit more fun if you're looking for a casual experience. Because having a cut is not always that pleasant. Oh, good well, chip. thank you. The reality of it is, is that I, I'm really not ready for web. Um, I mean, I might make a cut here and there, but more times than not, I'm not going to comp be competitive on that. So, I am. Well, um, you got Selkie and Webb next week, so just throwing that out there. Hell yeah. <laughs> What's better? I can wait on it because we got it in CC like two or three weeks after that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this sucks. We already know they're firm fairways. With eight mile an hour wind, I wonder if I can carry that. I'm gonna say no, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Hey, I hit that straight. Must be my mod working. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Don't let the guy 
guys in the PGA form hear you say that here. <laughs> I am completely playing. Guys, if you watch me long enough, you know for a damn fact I am using no kind of mod. Not even a little bit. I was just trying to figure out where you're going to make your eight this week. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. Maybe on this hole. Matt may have had the right idea. He's got a cleaner shot down that fairway than I'm going to have yeah. over there on the left. I was just a little bit worried with as fast as those are moving of landing it there and rolling it up into yeah. it. Yeah, I, I, don't think, I don't think any of us can get there anyway, so I don't think it's really going to matter. So sometime early next year, somebody's going to have to have a design contest that's not hosted by me so I can get a core centered. I'm feeling the competitive uh -huh. juice is starting to... Starting to mount up. Okay, this is a sucker shot right here. Because if I go where I need to go, I'm going to hit that freaking tree. That's okay. It'll still put me in the right spot. Wait, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Yeah, I should still be safe. A course at Yale. I've never heard of it. I say go for it. The more RCRs, the better, personally. Uh, it depends. I got very mixed feelings on RCRs. I like them. I think it's great when people do them, and I applaud people that do it, that do them well. But you really have to look at them and think about it. How is this going to play in TGC? Keeping in mind the physics of TGC versus real life. You know, you can only hit a, a ball this certain distance and everything else. So I think there are some that are better suited than others. Yeah, I feel like uh, designers, too, are two different types. Ones to do RCRs and ones that don't. Because, like, I think some people are just really OCD types, and they like to follow the minutia of Google Earth and that kind of stuff. And other people are more artists, and they like to kind of freewheel with the sculpting brush and stuff like that. Well, I mean, I do RCRs and actually kind of enjoy them. Um, I just haven't published one because they are so time consuming and I finally hit a point to where I put all my RCRs on hold until TTC2 comes out. I've got one that's almost done. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, they'll work way better in TTC2. Anyway, yep, so. I agree. Oh boy, that was close. I, that did exactly what Ooh. I wanted it to. I <sighs> rolled out a bunch too. Oh. Wow. Yeah, I was heavy in the rough. <laughs> yeah, it's over. Well, and Eddie, you're right. They are work. I'm not going to lie. Our, um, RCRs are work. But that being said, when you pull one off and it looks the way that it's supposed to look, um, it's very satisfying. Yeah, look at some of the well-known RCRs like Pebble Beach, um, Oakmont, um, Congressional, yeah. uh, well, uh, yeah. Innisbrook, which is the new one. Good yeah. shot there. Hey, check I out am, this uh, line. Well, Copperhead was one that I was working on because of the course I'm very, very familiar with. Um, and then when um, when Michael Flood, um, a.k.a. Aces, said that he was doing it, um, he was like, I don't want to step on your toes. I'm like, oh, hell no, dude, do it. You know, if nothing else, I can still take that course. I can make changes, and I can call it, like, Copperhead Road or something like that, and mm -hmm. it not look or play like the real course, and it'll be just fine with me. Um, because he's somebody that is very, very dedicated to RCRs. I mean, it's like what he does, like him and Royce, and there's a couple of guys. That's all they do. So, yeah. I'm looking forward to uh, Craig's recreation of St. Andrews as well. Man, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure yes. that Craig's even working on courses anymore. I know he had some real life things going on, but hey, I haven't seen, I haven't seen Heidner hair of him for a while. Uh, yeah, I know. Well, ho I'm hoping that... I killed that. Good. Damn it. I sit there talking, it's not paying play, attention. Uh, it's going to play real easy for now, but uh, still want to see it. What a great... Because there's just no good St. Andrews right now, unfortunately. 
Not really. I've got a, I've got a couple of courses that I will for sure do when TGC2 comes out because it's going to make it a lot easier with the way it's actually going to play. One being Tot Hill Farms by Mike Strands. Lord, that's a nice course. And if I can pull it off, then uh, I'll be a hero. I've told other people that. They're <laughs> like, I'm looking to do an RCR. What would you recommend? I'm like, if you can ever pull Tot Hill far um, Farm off, then you will be a god. <laughs> The other is um, Potomac Shores. It's one of my favorite courses I've ever played. It's a um, Jack Nicholas design um, that is just a really fun course to play in real life. And actually, when I look at it, it's one that translates crazy well to TGC. So I'll do that one, and I'm going to do English Turn, but that's a weird course to do for TGC. Weird course. Oh. Well, I'm going to have to look it up. Yeah, well, English Turn used to host, um, um, oh, what's the one that play in New Orleans every year? It hosted it for a long time, and now it's played Zurich. at the TGC, Louis, uh, what's that? The Zurich? That's it, the Zurich. It used to host the Zurich before um, they moved it over to TGC, Louisiana. Yeah, I don't know. And the courses sit like almost right next to each other. They're sister courses, but they're very, very different. I always say can't. Oh yeah, noble man. I'm gonna hit this tree. <laughs> uh -huh. The confidence. Yeah. No, I'm aiming right at it. Uh-oh, I hit another straight one. My mod must be working great tonight. Whoa. <laughs> Did you hit the tree, though? <laughs> no, no I flew the under the branches. I'm very disappointed. I'm very disappointed. Uh -huh. Sounds like I need to hit this tree. Hit the tree, man. Somebody hit the freaking tree. Just hit it. I really didn't look at it to see if there was a, a way to play on the right-hand side of that and if there was any advantage to doing no. so, so. There's another set no. of trees over there. Oh. Yeah, there's more trees. Yeah. There. Well, usually I would find that other set of trees, not intentionally, but my mod's working. Oh, your yeah. mod's working too! Look at that! <laughs> you guys set me up here. <laughs> Snap hook. Oh, man. <laughs> see, that's because I tried to lock up the driver, see? <laughs> <laughs> see, I locked it up the driver. See what happens? <laughs> okay. Yeah, see, this is why the TGCT After Dark crew does not lock up drivers. <laughs> Hell no. Yeah. I'm too many glasses of wine into it at that point. <laughs> well, I, okay, I say that. I drink like two, two and a half glasses of wine a night. So at no point am I inebriated in any way. As long as I, as long as I can say inebriated, discombobulated, yeah. and anti-disestablishmentarianism, I'm good to go. Yes, you are. I'm trying oh. to figure out how you guys are going to hold this green here. Oh, I'm going to hold the green. I'm going to hold it. Watch what happens. Yeah, Mitch, they messed with my uh, with my programs here so that I'm pinned it bad. <laughs> Griff took my cone, <laughs> and I, I got his cone. <laughs> He's got my cone. <laughs> okay, 8 mile an hour wind back in my face. 216. Oh, hmm. Wow, yeah, can I make it? Not in a, it's really not a attractive shot. This is kind of nasty for a par yeah, right? four. Ooh, yeah. If you, and imagine if the wind would have been like 15 in our face or even 12 in our well, face. Oh, you wouldn't get there, yeah. Yeah, it would impossible. Because not only would you not get there, you'd have that tree that we went underneath behind when you're way. I think I can do it. be hitting a fade. I think I can do it. I guess we just won't be. It's not the yes, it? Wind went back to nine miles an hour in my face on my swing. Get up there, bull! Nope. <laughs> yep. Oh, just on. Oh, just wow. enough. <laughs> just <laughs> enough. A CC guy schooling people. Well, except for the web guy that's two under. And the PGA <laughs> guy that's going to end up kicking my ass on this course before it's done. You never know. You might win. Nah. Pfft. Give me a break. I noticed something funny today. 
and I'd post in a shout box. Um, the other day, I played around, and my real-life handicap has now been upgraded to plus 2.2. My real-life handicap is plus 2.2. My TGC handicap is 0.5. My real-life <laughs> handicap is better than a freaking video game handicap. How the <laughs> hell does that happen? You're just that good. No, part of it's my own fault because, like, when I scout, I speed play golf, man. I'm not even trying to shoot low, so that happens. Sometimes I end up playing courses that, that you should shoot well because they're handicapped a certain way, and then you end up in 20-mile-an-hour wins. That's what happened to me on Lanai Bluffs whenever I was playing um, that round for the um, TaylorMade is I still shot, like, 8 or 9 under, but my handicap didn't change, even though I was playing it in 20-mile-an-hour freaking wins. Yeah. Yeah, I need to get good at games. Come play me in Titanfall 2. Come right. play me in that. Ah, that did oh, not yeah. break. Good try. Good try. I thought I was Ooh. on it. I thought I had the line. Maybe I just put it too hard. He says you got to get good at games, but it has to be specific games. So he's one of those people. Hammer's one of those people <laughs> that, that moves the goal line constantly. So uh -huh. now it's changed. Get good at games, just get good at games that I'm good at. Okay. <laughs> okay. What's up, Scarpachi? Hey, what are you saying, Antonio? Damn, another long par four, man. He is all about some length annoying. on this one, isn't it? I didn't check the scorecard to see what this... Um... It's like 7,300 or something, I think. Yeah, this is going to be yeah, a long 70, one. <laughs> 7,300. <laughs> this is going to be a long one. We've got, we've got a 503-yard par four coming up here. Number 10. <laughs> There's a 240-yard par three. Uh, well, and the wind's but then there's picking a up. <laughs> there's a par four. It's like 280 yards, though. So we'll see. Look at we got to carry water on this second shot too. <laughs> so oh you're gonna be hitting five wood over the water. Maybe I won't be. <laughs> what do you say, Mitch? You should be like me and hit it in the rough. I might do that. I may come join you. Wins up to 11. Yeah. Hmm. It picked up a bit. I do, though, like that that is a thing. What do you say, Reeb Dug? I actually mentioned Reeb Dug a little bit earlier in the broadcast. We were talking about courses that we um, are standby warm-up courses, and I had to throw Reeb Duke some props for um, Isla Reseca. That is usually my, um, when I log on and need to get the feel for the game going, that's usually the course I log up. Also, Reeb, when is oh. Reeb Duke so going to be finished, that course? When is it going to freaking get pinned? Unquote, when it, it was in its quote-unquote <laughs> unfinished state in the CC competition ridiculous so let me know when it's going to be done so i can put it on my calendar well i've got it tabbed for the vietnam open on the cc pro tour because that's just where it fits so i'm not like uh -huh. dying for the pins yet but um it won't be long then i'll then i'll be harassing him <laughs> Ooh, it's that super bound. i didn't need much that flies another foot probably pretty close yeah, Probably I've actually uh, I've actually got a couple of um, a couple of Reeb's courses that I use for warm ups because I use the Rookery quite a bit as well, um, just to kind of oh, like warm the rookery, up on. Yeah. yeah, it gives you a lot of different a lot of different 
choices to play. So. I'll stay up there. Yeah, no. It's gonna stop there. Well, if I wouldn't have um, de-lofted any at all, I probably would have been okay. But I chickened out with the wind. I was like, nope, I'll de-loft it just to make sure I fly the water. So, since we've got a lot of designers in here, I might as well go ahead and throw it out. For you guys that don't know, we have the Invicta World Cup of Design Contest going. We've got a lot of big names in it. Um, some of the usual um, suspects like Taste GW and Reeb Doog and Scampy and um, Adam Hill. I mean, some of the big names. We've got a lot of um, first timers or young guns coming out trying to take their crowns. And then, um, actually, Job Thicket came out of retirement to uh, throw a course at us. So um, we're about a week away from doing the publish on courses. So I definitely encourage you guys that when we go ahead and get the um, get this thing up and going and ready to start judging that you guys go check the courses out and um, give the um, designers some feedback and some props because um, you know we all have designers that we follow and everything but um, they, they really are the lifeblood of what we do here because just think about it if they're not putting out new courses we don't have new toys to play with so make sure you you support your design community guys I think uh, Taste head is exploding right now because he can't release his course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Taste and uh, are, yeah, so Taste and um, XG and Derpy Burger, they're both just chomping at the bit <laughs> to get that to get their courses out. But got to give me a second, guy or guys. I promise that there is a reason why I hold it up, and it goes beyond just Griff doesn't want you to release your courses. Too much. Look at that thing roll out. Um, we're okay not not scheduled or doing it next Wednesday just to be on the stream. What we're going to end up doing is that we're going to have every course that's put into the Invicta will have its own personal stream where me for sure and when I can get another person to go along with it that we will play the courses and give in-depth feedback and analysis of what we're looking at. So you may not agree with it, but it is what it is. Here we comes did that for all of the courses on the CC challenge. Yeah, so. we did all the showdown courses. We'll do all the Invicta courses. Okay, I see a bogey coming up right here. Yep. It's not a four-footer. You should make it. Uh -huh. Oh, boy, that was close. Woo! <laughs> that was close. Oh, yeah. Side door. It wasn't a four footer, that's why you made it though. See? Okay. Yeah. yeah. See if this was your putt right now, see we'd be having problems. Yeah, see you'd, you'd have no chance. Alright, part three. Straight down the wind. I'm one here. of the guess why I'm one of the weird people. I'd rather have the wind straight back in my face on these holes like yeah, this. Yeah, me too. Yep. Nah, I wouldn't say I'm the best guy to host a contest. I'm just the most willing sucker to host a contest. That's what it really comes down to. What the hell y'all talking about? Quit trying to brown nose. Y'all just want one of my damn watches. <laughs> Oh, it's a double green. I didn't even notice that. No, I ended up in a common spot. Oh, actually, I will not be um, giving them one of my watches. I am actually going to Grand Cayman in the Dominican Republic in January, so I will be purchasing them a new watch. They have a uh, new signature limited edition series I've had my eye on, so I'm going to buy me one, and I will buy the winner one. And if you don't like watches and you win, then put it on eBay, and you'll get some money for it. You will get some money for it. 
Probably don't even need to put it on eBay. You can just offer it to the best bid on uh, TGC. Yeah, really. <laughs> I'm sure there's enough guys that would pay for it. Why would you want to sell it though? I would just wear it and look Damn, at it. I lofted the like, shit out of that. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's that's why that flew so far. That's what I found when you go downwind. If you really loft the club, like the more you loft it, the farther it flies. Huh? Yeah, so it kind of cancels it out if you got a tail. Yeah, in. that's crazy. It's weird, but yeah. The um, yeah, if you guys aren't familiar with Invicta watches, I do a lot of diving and um, snorkeling, so they're technically underwater watches. Um, I'm not getting a underwater watch per se. It will still be waterproof up to like 150 meters, but they're uh, they're more of a bigger face style watch. But it will be more of a more of a designer look to it versus a practical diving watch. But I just fell in love with them for a while. Those and um, I got a couple of different watches that I kind of dig on. This is kind of coming back at me. Yeah, Here's this could fellas, be fun. Uh, this was kind of that was kind of the play, I guess. Oh eh? uh, <clears throat> uh, man, that off. slid off more than I thought. Great idea, though. It would have been easier to run that one way by. Yeah, I mean, I had the the distance down. I did what I wanted to with it. It just um, it slid off more to the right than what I wanted to. Well, look at the pro finally getting a birdie on the board. Uh, Gotta use the pin. If that didn't hit the pin, it would have gone 15 feet past. <laughs> yeah, you got that down to a um, down to a side. Yeah, the only time those straight chips are any sort of problem like that is when they got a crosswind blowing that's pretty strong, you know, and you got to kind of factor in the wind. Which is really weird, but yeah. Oh. oh, good try there. No, Rhino. There will be nothing private about these courses, man. Um, we um, we try to get you guys as much publicity as we can. I don't know. Scampy did it for the showdown. I don't know if he'll do it this time or not, but um, we'll get it figured out to where we have kind of a tour competition for the courses as well. And then I'm going to do something for um, the non-vets as well so there's going to be a contest within the contest we'll kind of have a subcategory for um, the top three non-vets and hell mitch already knows his course is going to be taking the brunt of the abuse because he's like my step kid man i'm harder on him than uh -huh. anybody I've, i have expectations for mitch and when he doesn't meet them then i ground him into pulp <laughs> Starting to sound a little Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> no, no. That's more like Fifty Shades of Gross. Uh, yes, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to mute myself for one second. I'm doing my friends. All right, it's tempting, right, to try and fade one around know. that tree? Okay, sorry. Thanksgiving plans and such. Didn't figure that the everybody needed to hear that. Into the rough. Hey. All right, hey, Griff's gonna hit hey, the big fade. What do you say? Yeah, Griff. <laughs> yeah. It's Not only two to the hole, Griff. You could do it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, but what about? That. This would be a really interesting hole if it was downwind. Yeah. Yeah, if it's downwind, it would right be point. fun, but I thought I might try to drive it between those trees, but it wouldn't go. Not with this wind, you know. A couple ways you could attack it depending on the wind, I guess. Uh oh. Well, I went for it, but uh -oh. it, it didn't happen. I was going for the big one, and I ended up slicing out of my cone. Oh, well. Oh. Well, now you got some fun here. Yes. Yes. Well, this is a hole where oh, you're really in that bad of shape. You got an opening. Uh, I do, but I don't. I really no, don't. I, <laughs> I really don't. 
I'm never gonna make it with that attitude. Scott Fox tried to land on the tee box for the other hole. I have a very positive attitude. I'm positive. Oh yeah. It sucks. Positive element. That'll be okay. That's a great shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'll, that'll be, be okay. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> trying, trying to figure out if either one of us will be even closer to that. Yeah. Y'all will both so. hit inside of me. One of you will hold this out. Yes. Oh, I hated my um, contest course for uh, the web. When I was doing Kakalaki, I was not cool with it at all. It wasn't until I got it to a certain point in publish that I felt, you know what? I've at least done myself credit here. So at least I'm not going to bring shame on myself. So, but I hated it all the way through. But you guys are going to understand, I am crazy OCD when it comes to design. If you guys ever want to know the extent of it, I will put my wife on comms and she will tell you just how freaking yeah. crazy I'm about my course is why I'm designing. Oh, you called it. Oh, hold out. <laughs> he nice. called it. <laughs> why? Nice if I get within five feet, somebody's going to hold it out, man. So. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Here he comes the PGA up. guy. Yeah, I was ghosting off Bruh. of you, Mitch. Um, what'd you shoot oh, on um, the first oh. round of um, Layla? Well, didn't you shoot like 10 under? Because I think I was like 9 or ten, nine under or 8 under. I was like one or one shot behind you, whatever you shot. So, Oh, damn it. Son of a bitch. It's a four-footer. Oh, yeah, the four-footers. Out of boy. Putt there. Yeah. Pretty pretty. I really wasn't worried till I saw that big left to righter right there in the front, and I'm like, I'll, I'll miss hit this. I, I can find a way to do it. I haven't played my last round that yet, Mitch. So I was I played the third round right before coming on and doing this. So I double bogeyed the first hole and still finished like nine under. So I'm okay. Actual w, double bogey the first hole trying to follow him. Mitch is officially an asshole. Just want to say that. Don't ghost <laughs> off of him. He does his own thing. And if he hits a shot, you can't duplicate it. So one thing I noticed on this that I don't like, I'll point it out when I get to my point in the stream. This is completely aesthetic. Um, it's nothing that you're going to get creamed on by most people. I'm not going to lie, though, in a contest situation, this probably would cost you points. And this is where you've got your fairway right here, and you've cut the bunker right into the fairway. So you've got nail clipper first cut right there around it, but I am much more of a fan of either setting your bunker and building your fairway around it, or building your fairway and setting your bunker into the side of it. I don't like cutting out fairway just by boom hitting the um, the yeah. brush right there i'm just not a big fan of it doing it that way boy that is hella deep for a fairway bunker right there but did the same thing over here not really a big fan of that but you know some people don't mind it once again that's not a um a griff says you've got to do it this way kind of deal almost hit putter off the tee that was pretty awesome um but it's one of those things that it just looks better when you do it the other way. Everything is too deep for this stream. This is about <laughs> after dark and alcohol and bad golf. Unless you're Dan Dan the catcher man. He's just <laughs> always on. You for there for a while. Well, I'm not just Get totally getting my ass kicked, so maybe I'll keep it close for a change. Oh, you were just waiting for the wind to change in your favor. 
Yeah, I need it at 20 miles an hour. Apparently, the only time I can beat people is when it's like the worst conditions possible. Then I score better than the field. When it's like normal stuff, I, I'm doomed. I'm doomed. I'm just messing with you, Mitch. You're not. You're not really an asshole. You're a douche canoe. Okay. Pop <laughs> the putter. There you go. I'm just playing. I was giving you a hard time because I was ghosting off you and hit the exact same shot you did on the first hole on Lilani Bluff. And yours hit on the other side of the bunker on that first hole and bounce out the fairway. Mine hit the lip, bounced straight up and down into the bunker and plugged. Somehow it popped up and then went straight down and plugged. I haven't figured that one out yet, but hey, welcome to the world of TGC. Uh And over the back into the bunker. Is it going in the bunker? It went in the bunker. Yeah, it went back. It's kind of hard not to hit it in that back bunker unless you do it. That did door the left. Yeah, it's not that bad of a shot. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So there's really not a great way to play this, is there? You can't hit the don't go, it won't make it. Hit the pin. <sighs> okay, I'll hit the pin. For the pin, that's your backboard. Let's see if I can play it out of the rough here and let it bounce up soft. Stop, 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 yeah, stop, stop. Now, yeah. I had a plan oh. that almost worked, but yeah. Yeah. that's okay. You really did. The firm, the firm fairway gets rough there. It's the same thing. Just still ricochets off. Yeah, I was trying to land it in that first cut and just let it kind of jump a little bit. I mean, it's quit kidding yourself, man. You're a web player. Even if you are on CC, you can more than hold your own on web. So I don't want to hear your stuff, knucklehead. <laughs> I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna spin it back. I think this is one of those where he's gonna hit it and it's gonna spin back on him. Probably into the bunker. Chris would have called me shot. Go fully lock. He's good at calling. Oh. Oh, I might no only. Way. I might only be a CC uh. player, but I'm. I'm pretty good at the bunker shots, man. I'm usually pretty dead on with them. Yeah, and you can see that one. That was a tough lie. I mean, yeah. the only thing you really do on that is what I, what, the way I play that particular one is max lo or max loft it from the 30 and hit it past and let it come back a little bit. You might stop it. You might not. But you wouldn't end up any worse than where you were. chip saving par see what am I I'm 11 yards away out of the rough going uphill with a bend oh uh, what are we gonna do what are we gonna do on fast greens uh this could be this could be touchy let's do it let's do it anyway get up there no should have went with my good instinct I originally had de-lofted it to run it up there, and then I changed my mind at the last minute. I should have stayed with what I was doing. Looks like only a three-footer, so you should be good. Um, Andre, the contest courses, the published window opens December 1st. So that means sometime between now and then, I need to get back with my judging panel and make sure we're all on the same page and all that kind of fun stuff. 
damn it, four feet. Oh no, four feet. <laughs> four feet. It's like three and a half. Nah, that's okay. Not much break in that one. Alright, we're all just three Dan, feet Dan, Dan, the catcher man. We tied with the PGA guy. Woohoo! <laughs> That'll last for one hole. Now he's about to release the pain. Oh, and since Andre is actually here watching, um, I was going to mention that on the um, TGCT Live um, dashboard that I changed the YouTube settings to upload to the After Dark YouTube. So just to make you aware, I'll change it back. I try to change it back intermittently, but for the time being, I did it so I could upload the videos without having to download them onto my laptop and then do them. This sucks. This shot sucks. <laughs> it's, uh... No, it really does. This shot kind of sucks. <sighs> yep. <sighs> Uh, it's not really a good uh, way to play that, eh? Well, I mean, now, in fairness to Jez, it's not nothing wrong with the hole at all. Um, no, for the no, distance, the size of the green, um, with the settings and everything, this is a very manageable par 3 for this length. So no problem with that. It was just with that tailwind right there. Um, you can't do much with the 3 iron. You really can't. Well, you might, but with as firm as the um, fairways are, you might be able to hit 3 iron, bounce it, and run it up there and be pretty close. But with a um, with a 3 wood, I just don't see it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, that's cool. I can, uh, I can change my Twitch up pretty quick to host whenever that time comes. So... Uh, I ain't cry about it one little bit. I was going to keep it there, and Doily was like, move it to TGCT Live so we have, we can use that channel. And it's like, okay. Now the only thing I stream on my personal channel is 12-year-olds kicking my ass in Titanfall. It's pretty awesome. Oh, Dan's got it. No, he's going. going to end up further away than I am, actually. Oh, no way. I thought he was going to hit the pin. Oh, he was on the line. He definitely had the line, but I expect nothing less from a PGA guy. After all, it's Dan Dan the catch man. And he dials it in. Look at Matt. Uh, I thought that was going to be better than what it was when it came off. I actually thought it was going to stick there, man. Oh, wait, that was Dan. Never mind. That was Dan. Well, I tried to get you back in the designer for the Invicta, man, but no. No. I got to do racing. I've got to do... I got to build roller coasters. I got so many other games to play, I can't design. I thought he was going to go for the repeat. That's a hell of a shot right there, Matt. That was on from right there. That was on, dude. Huh. This is an interesting little putt. This is an interesting little putt. A little bit more break there at the end than I read into it, <laughs> but still, it wasn't a high yeah, high good. percentage makeable putt right there anyway. Triple breaker. Ah, yeah, Dan's got a tough putt here too. Although he's clearly cut out of chat.
Hey, thanks for checking in, Greg. Happy Thanksgiving to you, too. And um, just so I can repeat it throughout the, uh, damn, another long par four. Um, that was uh, the TG, um, TGC course for you. That was Greg Fordyce under that name. Kent Noble, I don't know if he's still in or not, but he has been in. Those guys are hosting the course, the TGC course review every Thursday night at 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, by all means, guys, tune in and show those guys some support. So, You betcha. And uh, Scarpacci's probably thinking of Shalaya. No. Maybe. I've played Shaliath a bunch of times. Finally got that sucker pin. It's a beautiful course. It will be on tour after the first of the year. Hey, thanks for checking in, Greg. And um, Kent, you guys have a good holiday, man. Okay, now then, here's where the shank comes in. I just feel it coming. Nope. Damn it. <laughs> Uh oh, uh oh! Don't do that! Don't do that! Oh wow, goodness! Well, I put it just far enough right. I actually aimed at those trees over there. That's still where it ended up. Yeah, that was Shalaya Scarpacci. That was uh, that one actually won the um, Summer Showdown Design Contest. Beautiful course. Uh oh. Did Matt hang one or did he aim really far right? <laughs> he uh, aimed really no. far right. <laughs> I went right down the tree line with a little bit of a little bit of uh, hook around the tree. So that worked out perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. I aimed at that um that one pine tree down there, like right in your side of view down there about the landing area and let the wind carry it beyond that and it still almost rolled through the fairway. Yeah, you kind of got to keep it right on that line, otherwise you're probably kicking through or right where you are. Very good. Actually, hitting that tree was probably a good thing. It's probably got the best angle into the green. Yeah, yeah, See, that's what PGA players do right there. They know to hit the limbs. They know how it benefits them. All that shit was planned. Dan aimed for a leap, and he hit the... <laughs> uh, Dan Dan the catcher man's leap um, yeah honestly uh, Scarpacci you need to there were some really good courses that came out of it top to bottom that was just a good quality um, contest man there's a lot of tour courses came out of it actually I, I can only recall one course that was outclassed in the entire competition it was somebody it was their very first publish and I think they went up against Smoking Pirate in the first round. I haven't seen him around a little bit, but I hope he keeps designing. He had some great ideas. He had some fantastic ideas. It was just the um, implementation aspect of it that kind of got away from him. Okay, this feels like it could be bad. <laughs> this is either going to be really bad or really good. My vote is for bad. Waggle. Good lord, man. Really I had that on. way right for a seven mile an hour wind. I swear to God, if the wind is going northeast instead of just straight or northwest instead of straight west, the ball moves more at northwest than it does if you ah. have the same the same wind yeah, due west. That seem weird that way. Oh, yeah, that's right. He walked away with, what, $150? I, I forget what he even offered up on that now, but he took home a cash prize on that one. Hmm, I'll be short. See? Andre should have entered this contest because the, the watch is worth more than the cash he got off the last one. <laughs> uh... That moved weird. I just putted it weird, is my thought. <laughs> okay, that could be too. I've been known <laughs> to do that a little bit. Okay, I have a bad feeling about this one. Oh, 
one tick off. Damn Ooh. it. Oh, this is damn for the lead. I don't know if he muted himself or he, if he, he just got really out. quiet. Yeah, he was cutting out, but. I'm sorry, yeah, I muted myself. <laughs> ah. <laughs> just didn't want to be associated with us anymore. Yeah, yeah, he was fed up with it. I don't like we're doing it. Right? He's too leap for us. Never. <laughs> He's too leap. All right, another long par four here. Oh, uh, Lord. 504 yards. Nothing downhill about it. At least we got the wind kind of in our favor, except where you need to take the ball is through that tree. <laughs> I have no idea how the dog is supposed to hit this fairway. <laughs> yeah, just up? looking at it from the tee box. This has bad written all over it. Oh, you ain't touching. Yeah, wait till you see the shot. I'm going to try something crazy here. Oh, boy. You guys ready for this? I don't know if you're ready for this. Oh, I'm ready. The anticipation is killing me. Nope. nope. Were you going to nope. play into the other fairway? Oh, yeah, I tried. I tried to hit a fade. Uh, instead, shank it. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I just missed a cone. Yeah, that'll happen. Oh, I've been there. Right, okay. okay, like I said, I, if you hit driver here, I don't know how you can keep it in the fairway, so. Oh, I'm going to hit driver, <laughs> and I may or may not keep it in the fairway. I'm definitely going to be knocking <laughs> some bark off one of these damn trees. <laughs> so this is very much going to be a scramble for par kind of hole. Oh, no, no. stop, You missed ball. all the trees. <laughs> I did. Oh. I was counting on hitting a freaking tree. Damn it! Damn me for hitting the ball straight! Okay, you fellas just, you guys, this is easy. It is Matt's simple, it. man. He is. He's gonna show us. Oh, wait, maybe not. Yeah, see, that's what I mean. <laughs> No, but you're correct. Try and play it down the other fairway. You can go uh, three wood, but I don't know. I still like my shot better than yours. What the hell am I gonna do with this? <laughs> uh, I don't even know where the hole is. The hole's over there. Okay. Oh, okay. I can go this way. Uh, you got me. I'm disoriented. Oh, I'm in the heavy rough, so it's even worse. Yeah. You're giving a pitch, which is always fun. Heavy rough, behind a bush that you may or may not hit. You just never know. Oh, I'm going out to the right. I'm going out way right. Oh. Yeah, right. Well, there you go. Damn it. If I can make oh, birdie oh. on this, I have got a shot of staying even with the man. Damn it. <laughs> if, you can, if you can make birdie out of this out of the rough, I'd be impressed. Yeah, this has got quite the carry. Uh... Oh, we're carrying. Oh, we're carrying. Oh, yeah. I guess if you get 93%, maybe. Maybe. I did not uh -oh. get 93%. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Here comes the uh -oh. 8. Uh, here comes the 8. <laughs> I did not get 93%. <laughs> uh, par, like, on par so, five. on, um, yeah, it's par 5, so I'm freaking, actually, no, it's not a par 5, it's a par 4. <laughs> oh, damn it. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> so, I'm shooting for par on the next shot. So, I should have taken a 5 iron out of the rough there. Well, that was the shot. That's what I was trying oh, to do, barely. but... Just barely. That's what I was trying to do, but for whatever reason... Look at this no shot. This is great. Thanks, Andre. Okay, Have a good you. one, brother. See you later, Dad. See you later, Andre. Like oh, you've got a shot. You can do this. You're good.
195, loft it. You put this within three feet of the damn hole, man. It is medium permanent. Don't be a baby. It is. Yeah, baby. Golly, <laughs> all these PGA guys crying about it. I don't like the green firm. I don't like the green soft. <laughs> I don't like the greens back. I don't no. like greens no. ahead break on them. <laughs> Wait. Like how in the hell green. am I still in the freaking rough after taking a drop in the fairway? I oh, just got that. screwed. You did get hosed. Why are you there? I just got so screwed. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 detected a CC player doing too well. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, that'll be enough out of you. <laughs> um. Yeah. I don't know. I think. I think this is the shot right here. I think this is the shot. I'm probably wrong. Oh, went further than I thought it was going to. With the wind. Of course, when I started doing my calculations, the wind was eight miles an hour in my face and not six. I don't know if I'll make an eight, but a seven is quite possible. Are you going to putt from there? I might. Depends on how many four foot putts I have in this. There's a shot there. I have had a par three before where I landed seven feet from the hole and three putted, so nothing is out of the realm of possibility. That. And that was just like a week ago. One second, I gotta refill my wine glass. Ooh. It's a little leaker there. Oh. Almost a great par. Yeah. All right, this is for Bogey. Sorry, wife coming by to give me sugar, so I gotta get a kiss. It happens. Oh. Yeah. You know, I got you beat though, Griff. Cause my wife's out of town. <sighs> Uh, my mind as well be right now. She's on those six o'clock in the morning till oh, yeah. ten, eleven o'clock oh, at night kind of days. She's a damn it. Told you, four foot putt. Hide and uh, watch. She doesn't have to work. Uh, she doesn't have to work tomorrow, does she? Oh yeah, she does. She'll be there till like midnight oh. tomorrow night because Walmart does not do Black Friday on Black Friday anymore. They do it, yeah, on, they do it on Thursday, Thursday. so oh, they will actually start all their Black Friday stuff tomorrow at like five o'clock at night. So she actually takes. Friday off and we do our Thanksgiving on Friday her best friend is another store manager here in town so we all end up getting together the day after Thanksgiving they better get paid big bills oh they do they do yeah, that's, yeah, that's nice. speaking of Black Friday I never understand why they do it on Thursday well, it didn't used to be on Thursday. Now it's on Friday. Know, right? Now now Cyber Monday is on Black Friday. So yeah. go figure that. Yeah, pretty much. And in one hole, the CC guy has all of his hopes and dreams dashed. <laughs> I'm not You're going to make a hole in one here somewhere. <laughs> hole in one coming no. up. No. <laughs> no. Only time I make hole in ones are in the designer on my courses with no wind and playing the same hole over and over and over testing it. And when I need it to bounce like a different way to test the green, it will inevitably run up, hit the pin, and drop in. Go figure. Good shot there. Yeah, right. Not bad. That'll hunt. Yeah, I'm assuming I'm hitting last this time. Yay! Yay for me!
I don't care if people see it, Rhino. I really don't. One thing you'll learn about me in a hurry is that I do not do things for recognition or anything yeah. else. Yeah. It's all about the enjoyment. Thank you. All right, somewhere in between those two. <laughs> you kidding me? I just don't want to bogey it, so I just want to be on the green. Wow. That wasn't the shot. Yikes. Yikes. Get off that slope. Come on back. Here it comes. That's just pure luck right there. I went up to um, 195 and lofted it, and it still flew it with an eight mile an hour wind back at me? Really? Did not think that. It was more across, I think, when you hit it though, wasn't it? Hell, I don't know. There comes a point nah. that I quit looking. We're distracting. Nah, nothing's distracting me. I'm just, there comes a point that I just don't know, but. <laughs> okay, putt there. Oh. Yes, buddy. Oh, what a Yeah, the putt there. Yeah. Oh, you know what? There comes a point. There <laughs> comes a point where you don't give a fuck anymore. It just goes in. Uh, <laughs> I'm not oh, a horrible boy. putter unless it's from four feet away. For whatever reason, man, it's the four footers <laughs> that give me the problems. Put me at 20 feet away and I'll burn the rim or put it in every time. That's right. Nice. Everybody cleaning up. I think he's hustling us, Matt. You know, he hit the ball in the trees, and then he made birdie from there. Yeah, I know. He's climbing <laughs> away every, every way. Nah, I don't think so. But, but now, to finish my thought, Ryan, like, um, I mean, honestly, and other people will tell you, I do not take compliments well. I really don't. Um... And it's not me trying to be humble. I just don't, I don't do things for a pat on the back or recognition or anything else. So, I mean, it, it's going to come out like in this design contest, as it starts wrapping up, there's going to be a lot of, oh, Griff, thank you, blah, blah, blah. And I'd much rather you guys as designers get the recognition and the judges doing the work behind the scenes because I'm just along for the ride, man. If you guys have fun with it and um, get some exposure, if the judges have fun with it, if the community gets lots of cool courses to play and everybody's copacetic then that's success to me and I do not need recognition for a damn thing with it believe me not my style to be fair though you are the only one dropping down cash money for a walk eh, yeah all right it's tax and duty free in the Caribbean so <laughs> however however you put it yeah it's still pretty even H, oh, I guess HB, uh, well, no, HB, I was going to say, they haven't really, I don't think they've ever offered a prize for a design contest. Though they did, they did give away some clubs for a uh, elimination contest. Yeah. So you're more generous than HB, really. Eh, I don't know about all that. Great <laughs> for president, 2020, yeah, I agree. Yeah, there you go, I like that. Whatever. Y'all would not want me as president, man. You guys got a problem with Trump? You sure as hell don't want me as president. <laughs> I'm a retired first sergeant. What do you think my attitude on life in general is when it comes to that uh -huh. shit? Griff will have mandatory bed making every morning for every citizen. No, nah, it's not quite like that. Uh -huh. No, all right. Actually, that's basic training in AIT, man. Once you get out of that, they don't give a shit. You don't have, like, wall walker uh -huh. inspect. Yeah, that's only for basic training in your AIT. Beyond that, like, if you live in the barracks on post, it's more like living in a hotel. They don't give a shit. Show up, do do your job. and. Yeah, I suppose, hey, it's all kind yeah. of weird. You don't have to stay in those types of quarters. Uh -uh. Like your boot camp or whatever. Nope. I mean, there. I mean, you still have like, uh, you know, you don't want your uniform and your boots and all that looking jacked up when you show up to formation. Right, That's yeah. just part of the life. I, if I was in the military and I didn't do that, I'd feel disappointed that I wasn't made to do that. You know, <laughs> kind of yeah. deal. So yeah. <laughs> they started the uh, they started the stress free basic program and basic training in the early '90s, and my first reaction was like, 
number one, you got to be shitting me. Number two, it was like, I would have <laughs> felt ripped off, you know? Yeah. If you didn't get screamed at. <laughs> I would have felt, oh, I did too, man. Oh, I, st man. I still, I oh, still man. remember my first day of basic like it was yesterday. Like oh, it God. was yesterday. I cringe when my dad would like raise his voice slightly at me, so I can't even imagine what I would have been like as a young man. Yeah, right. I would have pissed myself. No, because you honestly, number one, you're expecting it. Um, yeah, I suppose. I mean, you know what's in store for you when you're doing it there. So, okay, I'm going to play this a little bit different. Probably wrong, but different. Into the bunker? Yes. <laughs> It might actually end up there. You gonna play the spin sideways, lob, lobways, or whatever? Ah, uh, spin. That Ooh, felt so stopped. yummy. It better it just stopped. stopped. I delofted the shit out of it. Uh -huh. That was a 55-yard sand wedge, delofted a lot. <laughs> Sometimes those pitches will run out a lot well well that one I had a deloft and it just kind of bit um, bit on it what I don't like is going up to 75 on that and then lofting it down to fit that shot because it will almost yeah. inevitably roll back on me even if it doesn't yeah. for everybody else it will roll back on me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah or you can just play from the rough ain't no way you're going to get roll back hey, that's, that's why I wasn't horribly upset when that went in the rough okay okay So see, like this one, that 60 yards right there into that wind with the sand wedge, I can hit this like right there at the cup. This is one I've actually got dialed up. I've practiced it quite a bit, I'm trying to get out of the habit of flopping and lofting wedges and all that. So I play a lot of D loft on a lot of clubs now just to kill the spin. That's one of the shots that I've had to practice recently is playing those like sixty percent full shots, you know, pitches or flops or whatever it ends up being. Yeah. You don't yeah. get the crap out of the ball. Yeah, you you realize pretty quickly once you've hit a fully lofted flop that runs back to your feet that you really need to learn how to do half flops. Yep. If you can't control your spin, then you're screwed. Well, and depending on what it is, sometimes I'll de-loft and do percentage or just de-loft. I mean, it's all about what it is. Now, the de-loft is very situational for me. Um, I play a lot different out of bunkers because I found a way that works for me, and I do a lot of loft um, on bunkers. But I've also learned how to control it. So yeah. out of 10 bunker shots, I'm pretty much dead on 9 out of the 10. I'll have one every once in a while that just doesn't do what I expect, but more times than not, I'm pretty salty with them. Probably the best part of my damn game. So I should be hitting out of bunkers for every shot. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I'm aiming for those bunkers right now. <laughs> do it. Do it. You sound like a Ooh, bad a influence. One. You sound like a bad influence. I got Gris Bunker. Oh. Actually, that won't be a bad shot from right there unless you're plugged. That's yeah, plugged. They're plugged. <laughs> I don't know. I saw it roll. Yeah, I think it might have rolled forward. So well, the can hop up and then plug. Yeah, true. Oh, true. Yeah. In PGC, it's possible. Hey, man, we already know for a fact. We proved last week you can get backspin off hitting a tree. So nothing. Yeah, that's true. Nothing that's is true. out of the realm of imagination. You tried to go in that bunker. No, I had that one cleared. <laughs> I had that little one sweat. cleared. Little sweat, nice little distance. Speaking of the uh, half pitch shots here. Pretty well done. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's got a nice little kill there. That's 
that's going to be interesting. All right. Oh, look at that. As long as you can figure out how this is going to come out of there. I actually like the concept behind his bunkers on this one, so not to beat a dead horse, I'm not crazy about the first cut around that. That's just a me thing. But as far as the way the hole is constructed, it's kind of kind of neat. He definitely gives you the bell out area to the right, but if you drift or to the left, but if you drift off to the right, you've got danger there. Yeah. So. yeah, they collect bad shots, but they let good ones stay out there. So yep. it's, a, it's a really good short hole because it's tough to get the ball close. Well, and your eyes light up when you see a 288-yard par 4 off the tee. You're yeah. like, oh, yeah. And then it doesn't you know, necessarily play that way. Yeah. And to be quite honest, even if you make it up on the green, I don't know that you want to be on the green where you end up at. It's really going to depend on where the pin's at. But nice shot, Matt. Nice shot there, too. Nice shot, Matt. All right. Over the hill here. Oh, you got this. You got this. You're a PGA or you see worse than this every hole every week. <laughs> uh, I just didn't hit it hard enough. Yeah, you definitely had the line. Yeah. Definitely had the line. Well, it was actually on the line, and then you watched it like when it got to the very end, yeah. and it died, it and then it moved. Yeah. yeah, then it moved. With a little bit more speed, it was... Yay, I'm still respectable! <laughs> Even after a six... Mm -mm, you can do it. Hmm. I like the look off this tee box because the trees make it look a lot tighter than what it is. Yep. They're really not going to interfere with your shot, but it definitely gives a very, very closed in feel to it. I'm talking about can't get it close. Uh, yeah, that's about it. I mean, that's as good as you're going to do right there. It rolled all the way back there. Yeah. yeah that's a tough one. I thought it was going to stop one before. Day. If I, I didn't before I got up there. All the way. I didn't feel like shanking this one. You loft up all the way. Well, I'm not going to loft at all. Now I see the problem. <laughs> that's the way this no green way. falls in. No. No. I wonder. <laughs> hmm. No, I won't. I'll just take my medicine. I go for it. No, I'm just going to take my medicine. Yeah, Hammer saw what I was going to do, and he's like, nope. But it would actually probably be uh -huh. a pretty good shot. If it wasn't for the 10 mile an hour wind, wind, it would work great. 10 mile an hour wind's probably going to leave me too short, but I was trying to figure out how I could drop it on that fairway just to the left front third of that bunker and let it bounce up and roll in. That would be a good shot, but. I think with this wind, five wood will actually be, because I had a kind of a crosswind, now it's more in your face. Good yeah, stop. we're going to see. Find out here in a sec, huh? So TGCT live, that must be Clint. It's got to be. He's the last one I know that was logged into it. So <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were talking to yourself there for a second. No. Uh -huh. Well, I, I kind of feel like I am because usually that's what comes up under my name now. What was great when I was sending emails out of my personal account the other day, and it was sending them as TGCT live, and they were for work. So I had to explain that one off. Uh -huh. <laughs> Before they were TGCT after dark, so. Um, Ooh, even worse. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because the guy that actually is the um, CEO of the company that I consult for is like, um, so what's this after dark stuff? Is there something we need to talk <laughs> about? And I'm like, no, 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 man. It's a it's just a show about a video game golf show. 
He's like, okay, I just want to make sure it wasn't like some kind of BDSM site or something like that. I'm like, no. DGCT, not NAMBLA. <laughs> oh, hit the flag. No, oh. uh, that's going to roll up farther than yours did. What do no. you say, Clint? Clint. You know what? I'm not sure that I like this chip. This one, this one has bad intentions. This has flop written all over it. No. No, no, no. 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 That's the weakest part of my game right here. That damn side of the hill. You know that yeah. 90 yard chip shot that's going to go up over something? Yeah, a little lofted uh, sandwich. Well, you can see the hill from your shot right now. You can see what I was coming down off of, and it's like it hit it and kicked automatically left. That wasn't even the break, man. It kicked off the damn hill. Uh. I'm the king of lifting out my chips. It's heartbreaking when it makes it again. Oh, look at that. The PGA guy. Yeah, He's lucky. got it dialed in. Lucky. Lucky. Just lucky. Um, you just need round four, Mitch. If you just need round four, I'll grab them for you. I've already done round three, but I'll I'll grab you round four. Nice right, putt. Right there. Holy Good crap. Putt. I'm going to be the only one that make it, doesn't make a damn birdie on this easy hold. <laughs> oh, and I switched off my putter right there. That almost sucked. Hit drugger. You're going to... Yeah. <laughs> You'd um, be an honorary Euro Tour member if you hit driver off the green. I cannot do round two, Mitch, because I'm already way past it, but I can do four. Actually, I think everybody's beyond two, man. Oh, look at Matt. Matt putting it up tonight, man. Goodness. Man. Showing us how it's done. I'm excited for all these uh, design contest courses. I am, but I'm out. not. I'm excited to see what everybody's putting out. I am not excited for the 32 courses. So the, what, 60 some odd hours of streaming that's about to happen with this? Yuck. Well, that's a lot, of, a lot of golf to be played. Okay, so the newer guys, Rhino, Clint, Derpy, for a contest, I'm going to say this. If you do a retaining wall, if you do a cart path, if you do a rock wall, whatever extra features you're putting in, if you're going to put them in, take them all the way. Don't half-ass them. Make them look right. Meaning, if you put cart paths in, flatten them out and fill in the little kinks and stuff because the reality of it is, is that once we get past Design 101, meaning that tee boxes are flat, bunkers are sculpted, blah, 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 blah. All the stuff that we know just has to be done. It comes down to the finishing. And if you have, if you're up against a course that has a cart path and it's done well and yours is just thrown down, you lose points. So just make sure that whatever you do, you've got the time and you take the time to do it right. Yeah, I would say it's much better to have two or three good to great features on your course, i.e. rock walls, etc., uh, that are very well done than have, you know, you try and get seven or eight fancy areas into your course. You got you to gotta walk before you can run. Yeah. yeah I agree. Yep. Um, cart paths are actually crazy easy. As long as you're not trying to mess with the handles, what most people try to do is go back with the handles and try to fix them that way, and that's not the way to fix them. If you have the kinks in the fairway, or excuse me, in your cart path, all you simply do is leave it alone, go back op or go back in, open up your cart path tool, and drop your uh, your first point right before the kink. And depending on whether it's in a curve or how long it is, either right in the middle or right past it, and hit enter, and it will fill it right in. It will automatically take care of it. It's a hell of a lot faster than trying to adjust the handles. Believe me. Just add some more.
damn it my plan worked except it hit the wrong side i had a little bit of a slice on it that's what's so annoying about ps4 for me now is that i'm used to doing this on pc and i have to pull my stick back eight or nine times before i can actually get a damn swing oh i, I find the opposite i i play on pc and my controller is the least responsive thing in the universe it takes me like five swings to swing sometimes no, mine is crazy sensitive on um, on PC. As a matter of fact, that's why I don't play my tour rounds on it because when I pull it back, I just barely have to move it forward to um, to get yeah. it going. If I like try to do my P or PS4 swing, no, nope, no way. Yeah. It will um, go off left or right every damn time. I have to pull it back and just barely flip it. Did you go two or five wood on that also, Dan? Yeah. Yeah, yep. I went. I thought it was the right shot, but like I said, I slid off to the left on it. So I was trying to hit it right in that hill. I don't think it quite took enough of it off. Well, that's where I thought it would. I thought it would land yep. towards the front of the... Um... Yep, there that one goes. Yeah, that's why I didn't want to hit that shot right there. Yeah. I learned my lesson from that part of three. We had a couple holes back. Yeah, uh, I was just well, trying to hit the front it. of that green. Yeah, that was a tough. That would have been a tough shot, no matter what. I could have had. Well, there's a nice though. little backstop right there, right, right below where my ball is. So if I, yeah. my ball had been like a foot shorter, it would have rolled all the way back down to the hole. So. Yeah, you were, you were close. That's why I was trying to hit it in that tier that's in the middle of that green. Have yeah, it roll up, roll back down. Yeah, it's always nice when you can hit. Oh, <laughs> you, are, you dirty whore! <sighs> You can almost roll it up that tier and get it to come back a little bit. Well, that's the thing, right? you, can almost get it, you can almost get it two chains. Yeah, you can yeah, at least be aggressive with it because it's not going to go anywhere. I mean, you got a 10 foot hole or slope behind you. So, it ain't going to go too far past it. Oh, yeah, you're okay there. It says Dan, who's just going to ram it home. <laughs> yeah. just going to jack one in there, so what does it matter? Like that, you mean? Yeah, just yeah. like that. <laughs> no, good chip. Oh, yeah, man. nice shot. I expected Hashtag nothing less. For chips. Yeah. Hey, you got to on this. On Hashtag, this. I would have scorned you had you missed it. You're a PGA guy. You're supposed <laughs> to make that. That's actually how you guys play tours, is it not? Yeah. On a lot well, of those courses, things, yeah. that is the shot. <laughs> For the eagle. He's just trying to pull away now. Matt's staying up with yeah. him. I'm trying to stay in the that's, game, but I ran out of holes. That's my fourth hole out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you actually have had uh, the craziness from off the green. All right, can I hit it in this bunker? Let's see here. Oh, can I keep it on the fairway? Oh, it looks yeah, like fine. you're safe. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. A lot more room there than it looked like. Yeah, I know. That always sucks when you have to lead, lead the way. But now, it's like, okay, we got a lot of room. Well, it went from a four mile, hour, four mile an hour crosswind to a seven. I By the time it gets to me exponentially, it'll be a ten. Yay! <laughs> We've got to challenge the, the CC guy here. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to find a way to screw this up. I can already see it. Oh, it's up to eight. It's going. I'm right. going to find a way to screw this up. Yeah, it's up to eight. It's going to go just enough against you that it'll put you in that bunker. Hopefully. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything, but since you've mentioned it. See, it's up to I'm nine okay. now. <laughs> Oh, I told you it was going to be up to yeah. 10 by the time it got to me. It almost was. Yeah. Nice little bump. That's the shot there. Yeah, good shot. There was nothing planned or skilled about that. Yeah. 
So Reiner, Reiner says, used Berkshire in Endeavor 3. Everyone seemed to love it. Crazy hours, put it on the bunkers, looked awesome. What's funny about bunkers is, and I know Rhino was kind of struggling a little bit with the bunkers in his contest course because, you know, trying to get the feel for them and everything, is that once you learn how to do bunkers, <laughs> they're crazy easy and take no time at all, man. Yeah. I can do, I can put seven or eight good-sized bunkers on on a hole and have them completely done in five minutes or less. It's just getting the feel for it, knowing what you need to do, and doing it. Yeah, and you have a very methodical way of doing it too, Griff, whereas then and obviously there's so many different ways to do it too, because you do it a fairly complicated way and you can still do it in five minutes. Yeah, I mean, that's why when I record that video, I try to tell people is that, I, you know, my way is not the only way to do it or the best way or whatever. It just works for me. And if somebody needs something to start, you know, to learn how to do it, then, you know, you're not going to be wrong. In, um, no, yours is, yeah, yours is a foolproof, pretty foolproof method. Actually, uh, I watched your tutorial video and... Uh, because I'd never ever seen it done like that before, and I tried it out, and it works very well. Seems almost counterproductive to raise uh, the land in a bunker, but it works out really well. Yeah, well, because when you raise it, <clears throat> and this is the thing, and I answered this question in one of the um, things, like, well, why would you do that? And the reason is, is that the default depth that when you go in and you just use a flatten tool and you go around the inside of it, the default depth is basically a foot. It's between a foot and a foot and an inch is default depth. So when you use that round fuzzy and you raise it up a foot, then you are counteracting the it sinking your bunker even more. Because if you ever notice, if you put a bunker down and you go around and flatten it out once, and then you go back in and you try to flatten it out again, it lowers it again. And every time you do it, yeah. it continuously keeps on lowering that bunker in the middle. So then you just end up with this massive hole in the ground. Um, yeah, so by it. taking that and raising it up a foot, you are counteracting that depth change and you're just flattening out the center of your, the pan of your bunker to an even depth all the way through. Now, Taste has a way that he does his as well. Taste is, is very good at it, but, you know, we can get similar looks off of doing things a different way soon. Yep, yep. I love it. There's so many different ways to do it. That's that's what makes the designer so great. I never expected it to be so good when I bought this thing. Oh, what the heck? Oh, okay. Killed it. Missed did you make eye. it or did it? It went, went in. in. Yeah, it went in. Yeah, yeah. on our screen it, it didn't go in. It and then disappeared on our screen. No, it's dead center. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's the thing, Rhino, is that, um, and that's going to be the case with everything in design. The reason that I know how to do what I do is not from watching any kind of video. It was from hour after hour after hour in the editor and creating a course, getting eight holes into it and deleting it and starting it over and creating it. My wife will tell you straight up that before I published Castaway Bay, I started and deleted that course minimum 70 times. Minimum 70 times. Sometimes I was five or six complete holes into it and still deleted it because... I just, I knew I wasn't happy with it. It wasn't what was in my head, so I just started over. So um, a lot of what I did was self-taught. And then, uh, you know, I've seen the videos now by, um, you know, by Taste and um, Scampy yeah, and, of yeah. course, um, uh, Andre's videos. But I've just learned things that worked for me and to get my look off of things. And, you know, and some people don't like the look of my bunkers, and that's perfectly fine, you know. Um I try to, I've studied a lot of bunkers in real life and try to emulate that look as much as I can, but hey, it's not for everybody. So other people like them a little bit more shallow and everything else. I mean, uh, Scarpacci just uh, jumped up. <laughs> my wife. My wife yeah, mine too. Well. If yeah, I mine too. start talking to my wife about anything TGC related, it is brain off. She just does not care. No, mine's, yep. I mean, she doesn't play. She doesn't, like, get major into it or anything. But, like, when the uh, the web.com finals contest was going on, she was all up in it and checking it out. And then the night that they had oh, the nice. telecast, I mean, she was watching it with me. And I think she was hey, more happy than I was. Yeah, you have a supportive woman. Yeah. 
It's because I taught her how to play Guild Wars 2. Ah, uh -huh. <laughs> there you go. It's because I cook her dinner every night. Oh, see, that also helps. Yeah. I'm about to jinx myself, but I have hit the ball crazy straight for me tonight. <laughs> I've yeah, so had any <laughs> Not really. Not I've really. had more shanks than you have. <laughs> You're six under with a double. Just think about that. You know? Yeah, that's I know. Right there, right? Yeah, I'm okay. Nah, I've had too many lucky shots. Hey, <laughs> check this out. Huge sigh. <laughs> no, that's the way she is with me when it comes to like UFC or MMA kind of stuff. And then she's just kind of like, okay, whatever. I don't think she'd be a fan of watching me fight anymore. <sighs> Ooh. Wow, that took a hard, huge hop. Yeah, it did. Uh, it's, it's tough, too, because, yeah, this, you got a big, uh, big slope right before the hole here. Uh, okay, I think we're on this. I think we're on this. We're going to Pitching Wedge. Houston, we have gone to Pitching Wedge. I think you should super loft like an 8-iron. Hold on, wait just a second. He just completely messed me up because he was talking about his wife, talking about how she sighs and everything else. And then he says, don't get me wrong, my girlfriend is super into it. So <laughs> just had to point that out. <laughs> if I even joked with a comment like that, I would have a shoe or something thrown at me from across the room. She said a stiletto, probably the uh -huh. back of the head. Uh, I think my wife would rather I have. Damn a Damn it! That so completely backfired on me. Damn it! Oh, that's spun a bunch. Yeah. Uh, what I was counting on it was hitting that hill that he was talking about, hopping a little bit, and then resting or feeding down from that point. Nope. It spun straight back down. So do not loft a pitching wedge that far. Damn, what a crappy shot that was. This is why I'm doomed to CCZ. <laughs> what slope? I don't know what you guys are talking about. Yeah, that's what oh. I was trying to do, but... <laughs> yeah, there you go. That, that was just a sandwich, just lofted up just a hair. Yeah, you, you got the big, huge drive, though. You must have used yeah. the Titan. Oh well, yeah, I hit, uh, lofted it all the way up on the driver, and <laughs> I knew it. Well, that was even shittier right there. Ah, you're golden. <laughs> the four footer though, he hasn't missed one of those yet. Yeah, today. yeah. Uh, I got a feeling I will on this one. I think it's longer than four feet too. I was expecting to be like a six footer. <laughs> My wife would wear stilettos if they could manufacture <laughs> a material strong enough to support her weight. <laughs> oh. Lovely woman, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Good putt. Scarpacci. Good putt. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Titanium stiletto. <laughs> It'd be on the way. Yeah, no oh way. my god, go that uh -oh. didn't break at all. It you showed a it. huge left to right right there, and it just did not break. You hit it right through it. I didn't hit it that hard, man. You're six feet past. Yeah, I uh, toned it down to four feet and <laughs> hey, didn't hit it hard. I don't blame you, Jeff. That's a tough little knob. I may have hit it too hard. I'm laughing too hard over here. Mitch is like, I can machine her some, but it won't be cheap. <laughs> what the hell 
kind of hole is this? Uh, yeah. Well, it's the 18th. It's supposed to be memorable. I see a lot of retaining wall. So There's a lot of wood. <laughs> yes, yes. I have no, no idea where to even hit this. No bridge. Oh, yeah, where's the hole? <laughs> <laughs> Aim for the plane. Aim for the plane. But it's a moving target, oh, well. so. I'm going to get crazy here. Let's see if I can hit this. All right. No, it's the last hole. Why wouldn't you get crazy? I'm going to try and ricochet it off the tree. I'm going the long way. Let's see if it carries. Oh, Lord. Oh, boy. Oh, it made it. Wow. I'm somewhat impressed. Oh, boy. Oh, so this goes to the left? Good. Yeah, it's yeah, way left. It. Oh, okay. The hole's way over there on the left, yeah. You only cut mm, that gotcha. much off. <laughs> well, I'll try to find a hole in the tree there. Oh, yeah. Watch what happens when I take this bad boy on. It's about to get <laughs> fun up in here. Go for the hole. Go for the hole. Going for the long way. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, uh -oh. No. Oh, no. oh no. Oh, that's awesome. Oh. oh. Well, I had fun, and that's what's most important. <laughs> uh. I thought it might hit the fence there and go back Not in. The wood, yeah. Good lord. I should be able to drop it over there though, Matt. With the being yeah, you hit the I, ground I at least. I'm, oh, I'm going to have a, a really fun uh, shot here. I think my guy's going to be le levitating. <laughs> levitating or in the water, one of the two. Where in the hell did Dan even go on this? I went left of where you are. Uh, left of me? There's I'm on the tee box. The, yeah, you, I can't see your ball the, anymore. In front of the bunker there, Drew. Well, that's what I thought, bunker. but his yeah. ball disappeared. There it is. Oh, maybe. There's an opening in the trees over there. Yeah, there you go. See the opening in the trees? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I see the opening, all right. So if we got a nine-mile-an-hour <laughs> yeah. wind, I'll just go where I went. No, it'll be yeah, down. Yeah, you straight down wind. It'll be. You're actually, I was sitting to a crosswind when I hit mine, so. It'll be. It'll be bad. Bad things are about to happen. See, I think this would this would be a great hole out the trees there, or maybe one or two trees. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, certainly, certainly going to take all your skill to find the. Goodness. Any more wind in this hole? Very. Yeah, for real. Oh, fine. You guys are boring. Boring on the fairway. Boring <laughs> Where was I supposed to aim? I wasn't like a. I felt like that was a very non-boring shot right there. You could have went off the tree. I have a propensity for hitting trees, whether I intend to or not. <laughs> All right. I thought it was a real possibility. Uh, I do like. I was expecting uh, it to hit the tree and spin back into the water. Yeah, uh, exactly. Get a drop back across the pond. Fun. There you go. Good shot. Thank you. He's still closer than we are. Can't wait for my drop, which I chose to take on the other side of the tree. So. <laughs> He's going to play this massive 40 yard draw. Uh, Too bad. much loft on that. No, I wouldn't bet. I'm usually a little bit closer than that with the pitching wedge. <laughs> this looks like oh, fun. Yeah. <laughs> this is going in the water. <laughs> no. This, 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 this is snap hooking into the water. <laughs> no, no. You're wrong. You're wrong. You got to aim this way left and hit a big fade. <laughs> hit like a nine iron. <laughs> Just like that, yep. Oh, no. This is yeah. going in the water. Oh, 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 oh that's saved. I still thought it was going in the water. <laughs> you call that a doily save. Yeah. 
That's a doily save right there. It looks like it's going to go in the water. Okay, so this is like, like the fifth or sixth or time. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Doily save? Bad. Yeah, I doily say has that habit of like it going in the water and then it like stopping at a tree or hitting the wood yeah, or something and just yeah, stopping it, dead. He'll be dead to rights, yeah, and then HB does him a favor. I think it's the admin quote glitch, unquote, but that's just me. <laughs> Um, so this is like the fifth or sixth time somebody said, that looks like a Griff or everything else. I feel like I'm getting a very bad reputation now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to start taking this shit somewhat seriously just to save my name. Um, you know, this is a nasty little putt. Yeah, it, it is. This is a very yep. nasty putt. This is not an easy pin right here. No. I know what I need to do, but... I know what's going to happen if I do. So do I miss it low or miss it high? Because I'm going to miss it. <laughs> miss it high. Miss it low. Yeah, it's tough to play. No, I, I had the line that I wanted. But if I hit it yeah. even a little bit harder than that, I'll miss it to the high side. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm just messing with you, Mitch. I don't take any of that serious, man. Believe me, if I was concerned about what people thought about the way I play a video game... As far as golf goes, I wouldn't be on here doing this. It gets worse when yeah, I start okay. streaming the um, the contest courses. It'll be a complete shit show then. Count on it. No, it gets oh, bad, man. Round, Dan. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, very well. 11 under. It didn't look like you were going to get there. I mean, you charred. Actually, the, oh, back, the nine back nine out. here. The back nine, the back yeah. nine was significantly easier for all of us, I think. I mean, I shot 29 on the back nine with a bogey. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. I had a six and a five on the yeah, back yeah. nine, so. Yeah. Back nine was definitely easier. So. Yeah. yeah. Are oh, we no, not too bad, though. It's four yeah. still. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, Jess is a quality designer. He really is. The uh, I only ended up five under on that. I really feel like I should have been better off, but. Uh, oh well, it happens. It I beat Mo, so I beat Mo, so it's all good. Um, but yeah, <laughs> he's a he's a pre, he's a um, he's a good designer. I think I like uh, New Kings a little bit better. If you haven't played that, give that one a shot. Yeah, yeah. This has got some interesting holes on it. I think I had that one pinned up so we can get it on tour after the first of the year. But uh, Jez is kind of an unknown on TGC tours, but pretty well known around the HB Studios forum, so. Um, you know, I've actually kind of come to the end of my list on a lot of courses. I've got a lot from the past that we can play. Is there something you guys have played recently that you think we should be throwing up on here? Oh, boy. I, uh, no, I haven't played it too much. Today. It seems like there oh. haven't been too many courses, though, recently. Yeah, Pablo's new course is nice. Yeah, the only yeah, reason I held off on it was the, um, it's about to be on tour. It just yeah. got ranger and everything else. I mean, I've got... See, my list of head over here. That one's done. Oh, I've got one. I've got one. Have either of you guys played Royal Wallace? Nope. That's no. what we'll do next week is Royal Wallace. That's uh, by Overrated Playa. Well, so, have, you uh, played, have you played the Highland version of um, uh, Western Gales? Of what? Western Gales, the Highland version. I don't know if you I played, played Western Gales. Ooh, no. Yeah, that's another good one. Okay. Let that's my guy who's not a well-known designer either. Let me write that one down. I'll give it a scope. Let me find my... I've got three different notepads here that all have different things on them. It's by Kenneth Cavana. Yeah, I'm not He's only got two courses well. published. Yep, not Ooh. familiar with him at all. Um, Kavana, you think? Kavana, C A V A N. Yeah, I'm just joking. Kenneth Brown, oh, I'm okay. pretty sure this Shakespearean actor. Did uh, either of you cats play the uh, Mighty Aegean by um, Herschel? Yep. No. Nope. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, it, it was done for a fantasy contest that never came to fruition, but it was a pretty fun course. I don't know that you can put it on tour, but pretty fun course. Um, either one of you guys played Tarantula Pines? Yep. Yep. That one's good. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. Da, 
da, da, da, da, most everything else. That's actually my tour list of things to get pinned or things to scout. Blah 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 blah. Um, what do I have over here? Oh yeah, this is like a massively long list here. This goes all the way back through the database and everything else for things to check out. Um, oh, McMulligan's Oaks. Either one of you familiar with that? Yeah, yeah. That name sounds familiar. Yeah. It was it, put uh, out a while ago. The, yeah, it was one of the um, the open qualifying courses last year, I believe. McMulligan's. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. What yeah, is it I really? It was yeah, that easy, sounds right. Easy open qualifying course. Uh, it was the yeah, easy one. So. That sounds right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I had um, looked at it for. I mean, it took a little bit of a bad rap on um, HB Studios. We were talking about some of the holes and everything, and Eric and I looked at it hard for tour last year and just ended up letting it slide. But I still have have it down there. Oh, I've definitely got one that you guys may or may not have looked at. Um, are you guys familiar with Mike Mike 3000 as a designer? Yep. He does a lot of good courses. You ever played um, Zawina? Oh, uh, it rings a bell. but I It's one of his hidden gems. It went completely under the radar. If I could ever get a hold of him to get him to pin stuff, it would definitely be put on tour. <laughs> So he, he's hard to get pinned, man. I've got one of his. I've been waiting to get pinned for months. Um, oh, it was a Boreal course that he did. Da, 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 Talena Pines. Oh, yeah. Talena Pines is a good one. Yeah, it's a nice course. And I've been waiting to get it pinned forever. And um, haven't heard back from him. What a goo. <laughs> nah, he's just one of those people... I'll tell you what, man. Um, Arctic Fury, he, Adam, he, he can be hard to get stuff pinned too, huh? Well, he's too busy freaking being a <laughs> maestro in the designer. I guess. Uh, I played um, Le Breton Lynx by PHA314, same guy that did um, Smuggler's Lock and a couple other courses. Yeah. Wasn't as crazy about that one, so. I'll have to check that one out. Yeah, wasn't as crazy about that one. See, we've already played Monarch on the Glen. Yeah, I've got several down here. Gemini Golf Club, Isle of Wyatt by Todd Driver. I know one that you guys haven't played that we'll have to play soon. The Pills Knock at Bryn Mawr. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> by a complete unknown. And another one that a lot of people don't know about that's a great course. Some people know it, some people don't, but it's called New Highland Dunes. Um, we'll yep. have to get that one on there, yep. too. It's a pretty nice course. So, yep, Han has a new one coming out. So as soon as he gets it published, unless the um, unless the guys over at T, uh, the course review, unless they get to it before we do, then we'll probably have it on. Yeah, no, I can't imagine why we wouldn't. It looks awesome. All right. Well, I'm trying not to... Um, trying not to do courses they do and everything else and thus far I think they have stuck mainly to HB forums courses because like the um, two that they played have gotten no notice whatsoever on TGC tours but they had you know good threads going on the HB studios um, forums so um, my plan has been that we we catch up you know some of the newer ones coming out since we've kind of hit a lull for a little bit I want to go back through some that are kind of hidden gems that we may have seen, we may not have seen. I mean, uh, you guys will see some of them more than other people will because I go, th I burn through a lot of courses through the Ranger forums. Um, even if I don't use them, I, I get them up there, have them looked at, and yeah. you know, kind of see what it is. So a lot of them come through there, which I haven't been doing a lot lately, but I'm scheduled till through the end of December. So I'm just now hitting that point where I'm going to go back and start getting on so i will um in the next week and a half two weeks i'll get the next block of five for cc pro and the next block of five for ccm and i do all mine in blocks of five and try to stay a couple of months ahead of the game but smart man eh it's a military thing man <laughs> <laughs> um to me bad things can happen i mean i keep courses in my hip pocket like i've got a couple of courses by wayne that are pinned that I will use on tour, but not until I'm absolutely ready to use them and not until I have a couple more courses to take their place. That way, if for any week we have something pop up, like Doily says, 
hey, you need a course that I didn't know that I needed, or hey, we put this on tour and it's glitched out, it won't work, which has happened before. I think it happened last year with um, uh, one of the web courses, um, Icelandic Reach. Yeah. Icelandic Reach. No, the one you guys were talking about, which is too damn laggy to put on tour, and I knew that going into yeah. it. That was Greg's um, Fort Isis course, the, um, the Malvern yep. Park. Um, I had looked at that course when he released it, and after playing four holes on PC, I went back and played the same four holes on PS4. And it was so damn laggy on my PC, I knew there was no chance in hell it was making it on PS4. And I have a high-powered laptop, man, for real. If your course is lagging on my laptop, it's jacked. So yeah. <laughs> um, I just automatically passed on. So I was kind of surprised when I saw Dell throw it up there. And I was like, well, maybe he had him redo it. You know, I didn't play it or anything, but... Um, sometimes, you know, Dale or Rod will have guys redo courses, you know, to, so I thought maybe that was the case, but nope, it was the original, and as soon as I saw the thread open up, I'm like, yeah, I knew that was laggy from the beginning, man. Yeah. That too was bad. a, that was a stretch. It's a nice course, but. It's a great course. It's, yeah. a lot, it's too laggy. But, and it happens. There's a few of them like that. I mean, you see it more in countryside, but I've seen some great countryside courses I'd love to use, but the fact of the matter is it's too damn laggy. Um, I was really surprised that um, the Belfry made it through because um, on PS4, the Belfry, especially the original, the first five or six holes, man, are really bad, one and two especially, and then it lightens up as it goes through, but it's a beautiful course. So You know what, though? I, I, I almost uh, salivate when I see a bit of a laggy course on tour. It seems like a lot of people... Uh, are looking for excuses to do badly when there's a bit of a laggy course or a course people don't like. So I, I take a positive attitude and then you beat all the people that don't care. All right. Well, Rhino just had a good question. Where do you need to try to keep the plant meter under to avoid lag? Rhino, honestly, the plant meter doesn't matter one bit because like um, Kakalaki runs pretty damn smooth and that plant meter is as maxed out as you can possibly get it without just completely making it explode. I mean, I am like all the way at the end of that bar on that course. What I have found causes lag is it depends on the theme. Like countryside theme will be laggy if you put a lot of trees on it. You just can't avoid it. Um, and usually any theme, if you use a lot of oak trees and you adjust the lighting to where you get a lot of shadows, that will tend to be where you get a lot of your lag from. And if you're on Xbox or PS4 especially, if you use a lot of multi-planting, multi-planting will cause lag on the consoles. I don't think it affects as much on PC. I've never had too many problems with it on PC, but it definitely affects it on um, on, um, on console. So you're really going to want to avoid a lot of big oak trees and a lot of crazy shadows on those oak trees and a lot of multi-planting. If you can avoid that, you're probably going to be in pretty good shape. And you'll know it. Um, you'll know it when you play test it. If you're getting lag in your editor, you're going to get lag when the course is published. Um, if it is lagging, then you just need to go through and take out some things that you planted. That's really what it comes down to. Yep, yep that uh, multi-plant button is so handy, but it's almost like you can't use it. <laughs> Not really. If you use it on PC, then... Um, if you use it on PC, it makes the file so big that you can't publish. If you use it on PS4, which, to be quite honest, I use it a lot on PS4 when, when I design on PS4, but you have to be careful where you use it. Um, if you do, uh, if you just do it in certain areas and you don't use a lot of flowers, if you're just doing primarily um, grasses, I find it's not as bad. It's when you get into multi-planting large plots of flowers is when it just kind of gets shitty on you. Yeah, yeah. Right. it's not like you can't use it for sure because it's still really nice for those grasses and the some yep. bushy areas. But yeah, you use it too much and you start to notice. I, I don't multi-plant any kind of flowers or bushes. Um, sometimes I do grasses and even then not very often because you can use a certain technique where I will go through and find my grass and especially on PC because it's so responsive. It's hard to do this on PS4 because PS4 lags in general in, in the editor. But when you go through, you get your grass one time and take it around in a pattern. Click, 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 and you put it down. Then take that same grass, yeah. make it larger, make it smaller, spin it, 
same pattern. Click, 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 click. Bring it back, make it larger, make it smaller. Spin it, click, 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 click. And that works better for me than multiplanning. Yes, Jason White, you are just catching the end of the stream, but we're still sitting here chatting for a little bit because usually we go two and a half hours and we're, we still have 10 minutes to reach that threshold, so I don't feel like I need to be rushing. We, we've been trying to cut these down to an hour, and it's just not going to happen. So um, hopefully we're, we're good, a good time eater for people when they're at work. So did you get moved, Jason? Are you in Kakalaki? I am waiting for Jason White to tell me if he has moved from Hawaii next Thursday. Yeah, I knew it was close to your time and everything else. So, yeah, Jason's moving to North Kakalaki next Thursday. So, yeah, well, usually there's a five-second delay. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Matt. Oh, I was just going to say, it must be sad. I'd be sad moving from Hawaii. Yeah, right. Depends Hawaii on where you're stationed. North Carolina. He's Air Force, well, so cold. he has a little bit different. I'll tell you what, Army-wise, Hawaii is one of the last damn places you want to be stationed, man. Schofield Barracks is a freaking hole. But um, that was funny that um, you get people coming in. I was actually never stationed at Schofield, but I have TDY there several times. And I, I'm honestly not a big fan of Hawaii in general. Yes, it has some beautiful areas, but it's different when you go there on vacation than when you live there. When you live there, you realize that 75% of it is a big freaking ghetto. Um, that being said, Schofield Barracks, um, everybody comes in. You have your dream sheet when you first enlist. And if you are enlisted for more than three years, um, yeah, see, Jason said Schofield and um, Shift are not the best bases in the world. No doubt about it, man. I feel you. But um, everybody, if, you, if you're enlisted for more than three years, then you are then eligible for an overseas deployment or a what they call a non-continental deployment. And non um, Hawaii is part of a non-continental. Um, everybody puts down Hawaii. Hawaii and Japan are like their dream places to go. Well, what's hilarious is that we don't really do a whole lot of army in Japan. We do in Korea. And all those people that put down Japan end up in Korea. And number one, it's a hardship tour. I mean, it's 13 months away from your family. They, they don't let you take family and everything else for a hardship tour. And if you don't have X amount of years in, you can't refuse those orders. So if you're only four years in, you can't turn those orders down. and <laughs> You just go to damn Korea for a year and... <laughs> The, the demilitarized zone, the DMZ, is one of the biggest lies going. There ain't a damn thing demilitarized about it, man. Yeah. Oh, no, dude. I, um, I, I, I was never stationed in Korea. I TDY'd there all the freaking time. Uh, because when I was stationed at Fort Carson, um, Korea was our actual theater of operation. And we just hit TDY'd over there all the damn time. And there are training accidents along that damn line all the freaking time. They trade shots damn near every day across that thing, man. Uh, yeah. Nah, I didn't lose a damn thing in South Korea I need, ever need to go back for. So, the uh, my, my favorite stations were all, uh, actually always U.S. stations. I loved Fort Carson, Colorado. I love Fort Ord, California. It's closed now, but it was there in Monterey. Um, and I had the... Um, the luxury of part of my training was at the um, Defense Language Institute in Pacific Grove slash Monterey. Um, it's still open. It still runs a language school. And um, I was there for 52 weeks and studied Russian. And then I went back there again for a crash course in Persian Farsi um, when everything started getting ramped up in the Middle East. Um, I know enough Persian Farsi to get by. I actually speak Russian. Um, Fort Ord was open at that time, so I actually went from DLI and then got my permanent party at Fort Ord. And then when they closed it, I went to Fort Carson. And then I went to Fort Drum, New York after that. But they were, I enjoyed all of them. Fort Drum was my favorite, but it wasn't bad. It was just way up sta state in New York, away from everything and cold as hell in the wintertime. But, um, but yeah, Hawaii sucked. Wasn't a fan of Korea. Teeny wide into um, Darmstadt and Augsburg quite a bit. That was pretty cool. I actually like Germany. Uh, I'm still we only trying to get one. my head. Go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. sorry. I'm still trying to get my head around the fact that you know Russian. Yeah, yep. right. I was thinking the same thing. 
Yeah, I was a, I was a Russian it. linguist in the Army. That was my primary job. Oh. I actually had two jobs. Um, I was a dual trade MOS. My first job was an I-7 Echo, uh, which was a Russian linguist. And then um, I was an interrogator, actually. And then my secondary MOS was uh, 19 Delta, which is Cav Scout. And we actually, our units, the way we were made up, we would go out and we always had, everybody that in our unit was trained as a Cav Scout and every one of us had a secondary, which was actually our primary um, MI um, intelligence um, um, job as well. So we had a um, 96 Bravo, which is counterintelligence, 98 Charlie, which was, um, um, they were analysts, 98 Golf, they were, interceptors meaning they would take a signal intercept it jam it and decipher blah 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 as an interrogator lottie da so um and we were 10 man units so it was it was definitely interesting but the things i know now i wouldn't have done when i was young and dumb in the military because i made myself very deployable to not good places so <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, but yeah but yeah, the um, I do speak Russian. It's pretty cool around here because we actually have a pretty large Russian community in Panama City Beach, Florida. Believe it or not, so oh, um, our little convenience store around the corner up here is owned by a Russian family, and their daughters and relatives all work in it. So it's nice to be able to go in there and talk and keep up on it just a little bit. Wow. Awesome. But uh, Jason asked, did y'all play some nice courses tonight? Um, yeah, I mean, we, we only played one. We've gotten to where we already know with the three of us playing and um, with turn enabled that it takes us a, um, a lot. So, Oh, I did not know you're originally from Pensacola. Yep, the wife and I live in uh, Panama City Beach. I lived in Navarre before moving here and lived in San Francisco before moving back down to the south. Well, if you ever make it home sometime, man, you need to um, let me know so that we can meet up and have a beer. We can have a cold burr. Jason's quite the good golfer too, remember? So you guys, yeah, play, play, I think he's like I think he's yeah. like a real life web player, yeah. right? Where well, he was aspiring, wasn't he? At one point, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we could have a fun game. We could have a fun game. Yeah. No, I'll take him to my home course. I'll play him on the course of his choice one time, and then I'll take him to my course. And then we'll then we'll see what happens there. I think I have an inflated handicap because <laughs> I just know the course really <laughs> well. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Navarre, the town that he's talking about on there, it's uh, about 30 miles at the most from Pensacola. And we call it the hidden gem here in the area. And, and don't get me wrong, we have some really nice beaches here along the Gulf Coast area. Um, people that have been to Daytona and Tampa and all that, they think those beaches are nice. They suck ass. Our beaches here on the Emerald Coast are beautiful because they are the white sugar sand. And you look out on the water and you have like the dark blue and then the emerald light blue. And then you have a different turquoise color and then another band of dark blue. And um, I mean, it's, they're just beautiful beaches around here. No doubt about it. And Navarre is where the locals go to get away from all the damn tourists. Uh, most people don't even know it's there. Um, it's not a very developed beach. It's only got like one condo complex on it. So it's a really cool place to go just hanging out on the beach. You don't, you're not swamped with people. Um, just just beautiful. Beats the hell out of Destin. Hell, our beaches beat Destin. Destin's the biggest damn ripoff <laughs> in the Redneck Riviera, which is what we call this down here. The Redneck <laughs> Riviera. Awesome. Yeah, that's what it's called, man. Yep. Oh, hell yeah. The um, I'll tell you what, when spring break rolls around, we have a lot of people that um, I'll get friends from out of state or people I know from out of state. They'll be like, hey, we want to come down for spring break. Where we should go? And I'm like, don't come to Panama City Beach. I'm telling you right now. Uh, stay uh, stay yeah. the hell away from here. Because yeah. um, they're family people. And I'm like, I wouldn't bring my kids anywhere around this shit. It wasn't as bad this last year because they um, – they, um, actually uh passed a law where you couldn't drink on the beach during that time of year anymore um, because the year beforehand it was bad down here i mean it was the worst i had ever seen i'll tell you some stories about that in another episode um 
you know, and, and I feel for the businesses because, you know, tourism is a big part of our economy and I want to see the businesses do well and all that. But hell, as, as a property owner, I, I get tired of that shit. I mean, in a hurry, it gets bad. It gets bad. So I'd tell people, like, go to Navarre, man. Go to Navarre, go to Gulf Shores. Don't come to Panama City Beach or Pensacola Beach and all that. Stay away from the college kids because it gets ugly. I would not want my kids around it. I'm serious. Dude, we had a girl got picked up out here. Well, the first thing that happened the year before last, like I said, this last year wasn't that bad, but the year before last, it started out the first week, um, Dak Prescott. He's now the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. He was quarterback for Mississippi State. He was down here for his senior year and got the hell beat out of him in a parking lot of Club La Vila. Club La Vila is, quote, the largest nightclub in the United States, unquote. I don't know if that's true or not. That's just how it's advertised. But that is where the majority of the Girls Gone Wild videos were filmed. And the guy that owns it obviously made those videos. That's... Uh, babe, how far away is La Vila from the house? A mile? mile and a half? Yeah, it's like around the corner. I mean, we live like across the street from the beach. So, um, so you had that happen. And then you had a girl, and this is what really pissed me off. We, there was a girl that ended up passing out on the beach, and guys started running a train on her. Fifty-some-odd guys with her passed out, and they were not her friends. People didn't know her. And instead of anybody stopping it, People were standing around cheering and videotaping it. They still have an active investigation. They've already prosecuted 20 some odd people out of it. They're still looking for more people to prosecute off of it. I mean, that to me, I sit there and think about it. I have a daughter that age, man. I would kill somebody for that. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that. I would straight up kill somebody for that. I mean, that I, that's just mind-blowing to me that somebody would sit and watch that happen to a girl. And then you had a girl across the street from Club La Vila at the gas station. The police pulled up. There's a damn line, 20 some odd people deep outside the gas station bathroom, and they couldn't figure out what's going on. There was a girl hooking out of the damn gas station. She wasn't a professional hooker, and she was only charging $10 for whatever you want to do to her. And when the police asked her why, she said, Well, I wanted to go to the club, and I wanted to make sure when I got there I had enough money to do whatever I wanted to do for the night. I didn't have to worry about my drinks or anything. That's the mentality what goes on on here for spring break. And it's four fucking weeks of that shit, man. Four weeks. Just move to Canada. It's too cold. <laughs> everyone, yeah. everyone has to keep all their clothes on. And then, hell, as soon as you get done with spring break, then you got Thunder Beach, which is like a massive bike rally. It's like second only to Sturgis. It is a big damn bike rally that happens down here. So then you get a week of motorcycles all through your damn house. Damn. And she wanted to live on the beach. For real? (laughs) Otherwise, it's great. (laughs) Other than that. Yeah. No, I mean... Tourists are part of it. You know it when you come down here, you know, when you're around, you're used to it. But there's just every once in a while, it just kind of gets to you. I kind of take it in stride now. We travel quite a bit, though, too. I mean, usually that time of year, it's not uncommon for us to either hop down to Grand Cayman or take a cruise or do whatever it is we do. But we're trying to find a week to get the hell out of Dodge (laughs) to turn one of those times, preferably the first or second week when it's the busiest. That's, That's smart. But... I don't think you're going to have to worry about it in Goldsboro, North Carolina, man. I think you're safe. So, (laughs) hey, man, you're Uh, moving to a great place for golf. I'll be honest. And your best place, don't let anybody lie to you. Forget what's there in North Carolina. Go right across the border, man. In 10 minutes across the border into South Carolina, hit Myrtle Beach, and you're on freaking golf heaven right there. If you need any recommendations on what to play, shoot me a PM. I will hook you up. So, yep, we have reached our time, guys, and I uh, want to thank everybody for tuning in. Had a pretty good crowd around tonight, so we were up around 20 people at one point, down to seven, which is where we're at now, but um, just to let you know, guys, you guys um, participating, is, this is why we do it. The more you guys interact, the more you guys comment, the more we want to hang out and, um, and do it. So, what else you guys got to say, man? What's up with you, Dan, man? Nothing. Just wish everybody, uh, all our Americans, a uh, happy Thanksgiving. 
We'll see everybody yeah. next week. Enjoy the football and the, the going on this week. Next couple of yeah, days. Us, Canadi us Canadians will be working tomorrow, <laughs> Friday, like suckers. But uh, yeah, very happy Thanksgiving to you guys and to everybody out there. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully everybody has a good week until we catch you next one. All righty then, we're going to sign off. Mitch just pointed out, yeah, Myrtle Beach has nice courses. If there's one course in your life that you play that's in Myrtle Beach, go play True Blue at the Caledonia True Blue Plantation. Beautiful freaking course, one of Mike Strands' best. It is a must-do. So I am going to um, share the sentiments of these two guys. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Once again, thank you for your support, and we will be back Friday night, we think. I mean, that's the plan. Clint's going to be here. I don't know if anybody else is. Clint's going to be here. Um, hopefully, we get Todd Driver or Griffin Ray or another guest on for the Friday night version of TGCT After Dark. And other than that, we'll see you later, guys.